Okay, here's the time. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Shikai Fan, and I'm the PhD student advised by Shandian. Uh, today, I'm invited by Shandian and to give you a talk about the machine learning debug and some basic about the NumPy and SciPy library. Uh, which we have to use during your project in the following course. So let's begin. Uh, so first, uh, I mean, the main topic about today is how to do the debugging in the machine learning. Uh, actually, I just set it uh, to roadmap for today. We have three parts. The first is machine learning debug, and then give us a very, very basic introduction about NumPy and SciPy. It's a very, uh, two very useful Python library, and we are lot, use a lot of this during your project in this course. And uh, let's get, uh, start on the machine learning part. So uh, let's first ask a question. So why is there debugging in the machine learning? It's very hard comparing to debugging on other like your algorithm, of course, because there are two cases of debugging in the machine learning. The first is your code, your model doesn't work. It's just like your uh, the, the compiler just reports an arrow and say is uh, give some errors to the output. You can definitely tell it's wrong. And the second, of course, I'm a standard case for the machine learning debug or the bug in machine learning is your code, your model doesn't work well enough. Just, just imagine you have a lot of model in machine learning course and you apply it to some data you want to use. And you find, finally find accuracy is less than the 50%. It's even worse than the initial guess. So that's the, another case. So debugging, when we talk about debugging, the debugging for the case one is more general. Okay, it's not only for the machine learning, it's for general programming. Uh, and the, the case two doesn't work. It's the basic the bugging in the machine learning. Uh, as we have the, the what 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 kind of bugs we will meet, we can uh, we'll give some example. The first example is about your recursion functions. And actually, I think you have learned your decision tree in your in your machine learning course. And I think one of your homework one is to implement the, the decision tree by yourself. And let's see uh, how the example uh, in this case. Here is, I mean, a canyon for, for the recursion functions. It gives some input, and in any case, you just transform, return something. Otherwise, it's an internal recursion. Uh, for you guys, if you have to start your homework one for the decision tree, you will program like this for, it, because this condition is what the recursion tree. But uh, not sorry, not recurring tree. The decision tree model is works like this form. Uh, and I mean, I will give here is just, just a very very simple example. And I mean, in the following slides, I will take this example to show how to debug and how to plan with this example. But before I go to the very details, I still would want to introduce your very high level principles about uh, why were why debugging in machine learning is hard and how to debug because. Um, when your machine learning models or machine learning coding is get bugs, there are two dimensions of the possible, the possible errors. The first is bugs is from your implementations. Is your, you totally understand the algorithm, you totally understand the model details. However, when you start to code again, you just get an error. It's just when you set the, 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 the bad recursion computation, when you set the bug, the, the, the wrong recursion function core or something. And this another dimension, I mean, it's called the algorithm uh, correctness. It's when you design the algorithm or when you try to understand the algorithm, you have some fundamental misunderstanding about the knowledge. And uh, there, there could be the incorrect, incorrect the base case, incorrect the recursion core, and incorrect the seed case or something. And uh, any dimension, any on, on any point and any dimension, you get it wrong and you cannot get your, the right, right answers. So, uh, this is very important when you get some box or an arrow for your machine learning coding. 
the first case you're gonna think is identify where is your location in this map. Is something wrong with your algorithm design or is just wrong, something wrong with your implementations? Uh, we still take the recursion tree, I mean, the recursion functions for first homework as examples. But here we have several crucial keys, key parts in this algorithm. And you can see here, uh, the third one, so we have the input for recursion functions. This should be your data set, your previous node of your decision tree, because we want to split the node. And there is the list of the use of features on there. And the, the, the case, conditional case in the red box is all the left data with the same label, all the features is never have been used or something. So in the in the red box, you have to define some conditions to to make the to make the decision. Why uh, should I just use this this feature or just switch another one or do a split or we add the, the decision tree? And the, the last one in the yellow box is the compute the best split feature and new node or something. So when you when you start to work on the decision tree homework, there are three parts. It's very crucial. And when you get back, it's most of possibly to come from these three parts. Uh, so here we just talk about the case one. I mean, uh, in the recursion in, in the recursion tree function, when your compiler when you when you the uh, algorithm gives some very stupid output or just report the error, it's mostly like these three parts. So check these three parts and follow the lower band here. Is that some error from implementation or the error from your understanding about the algorithm? So after talking about the first case about the decision tree debugging or the general machine learning debugging, we'll come to the second case. Second case is the machine learning, just like, like I said, is your code doesn't work enough. It's when you when you ask for to implement the decision tree, it works smoothly without any bug. However, the final report, the accuracy is very worse. I mean, uh, maybe less than 15% and it's even bad, worse than the initial guess. So how about the case two? And uh, actually it's something like very bad performance. And another case of case two, especially for decision tree, uh, homework, because when I do this whole, do this TA for this course, lots of students come to me and say, my algorithm is very slow. I have to run this for more than 10 hours to finish a very small data set. And uh, others just give some very unreasonable results. So how to how to handle this case? Uh, here I think is the example of the SGD, the stochastic gradient descent of the for solving the linear regression. Uh, and actually when I I think uh, I'm I'm not sure whether you have do this homework in your course right now, but I think you will have you will you will, you will uh, have to do this in the following course when you start to learn linear regression. Uh, because right now I think the, the schedule in this term is uh, slightly different than when I do TA. So some of the example I give here may not exactly perfect your progress right now, but it's fine. You can just get the general idea here and I will put this slide on the, on, on the website. And when you start to do the homework and you miss some problem, you can go back and find some help maybe from these slides. So this, uh, I just here give, give, give an example for this. This is, is the linear regression. You have implement a linear regression or linear model. And how to optimize optimize this, we use something called the SGD. It's a stochastic gradient descent, a very popular optimizer to optimize your machine learning models. And when students start to work on this case, I mean, our, a very general case is they found the model didn't converge. So what do you converge this means? This means maybe our target or the final the, the number of our parameter we want to learn is one, two, three or something. And finally, when you run this algorithm, it didn't go to the right answer, like the one, two, three, but go to the like the one million, one billion, like this one. So this is called not converge. So uh, so where, why why don't this converge? Uh, I mean, there are lots of cases. Actually, I can tell you, the code I show you, the procedure is exactly right. So everything here, the step is right. So why the, the final result is wrong is a, a, about the case two. So we go to another, before we, I go to the why, why it's wrong, I still want to show you some great, the, the general example, it's general principle for debugging. So for debugging, the, for debugging, for the for the case two, the debugs like if your machine learning models didn't get a great performance, there are four possible the reasons here. I, I for the uh, the first is your algorithm. Algorithm is your algorithm. You get the 
uh, designs right and your is your learning weight uh, because you don't have your, your up, uh, at the SGD. So here is something uh, hyperparameter you have to set for your machine learning models. Is your hyperparameter set is wrong, is too high or is too low? And another is your stereo implement. And then another another dimension is the model because we have lots of the uh, models in machine learning. To solve a specific problems, you have lots of choice. Can, I can use the SVM, I can use the, the decision tree, I can use the linear regression. And so there's a, a very classical statement in machine learning. There's no, there's no serial bullet in machine learning. This means for specific model, for specific data, you have to choose the, the appropriate model. You cannot just pick one and things and just imagine this one can solve all of things. That's not, that never happens. So in the case, in the general case, when you want to solve a machine learning model or data science problems, you have to pick the right, the, the right models. So in some case, when you find your model didn't get where, one alternative solution is switch to another model. But I think this case don't happen in your project or in this, in this course, because in your homework, uh, the data we offer to you and the model we asked you to implement is the exact match. So we are 100% uh, confident you can solve our problem with great performance with the model we, we let you use. And the last dimension here is the data, because some of the data, data is, I mean, is uh, as a key part of all of the whole machine learning algorithm. So is your data use is correctly, is your data is have some noise, or in some case, you have to do lots of the data process to make the model run, run, run smoothly. So when you, for, if you found model doesn't work well, a general solution is first, look at your data. Is your data is normalized? Is your data is squeezed to some proper size? Is data process is something right? So when you so just go back to the uh, general saying, check these four dimensions when you you find your machine learning model can run, but with bad performance. Uh, and let's go back to the exam. Okay, sorry, I should get it here. Oh yeah, it's here. Let's just give a more ex ex concrete example about how your data can have the problem for your machine learning models. Uh, someone, if you gather enough concrete data, your performance should be good. However, if some for some case the data size is low, you don't have a, you have a small size data. Just imagine you have only uh, dozens of samples in your data set. However, your machine learning models have the thousands or millions of parameters. That's of course will fail. And someone the label for the data can, could be wrong. Uh, but here, I think I can I can tell you in your machine in your in, in this course in your project you will never meet this problem. But in your further career, if you want to handle some more challenging machine learning problems, you will meet these problems. So check your data. Maybe it's the first step for all the machine learning uh, procedure. Uh, and so let's go back to the SGD in the linear regression example again. Use the principle we just talked about to debug it. So if you, uh, uh, because you don't have learned this regression, so you don't have to get every details for like what is code saying, but just get the big idea here. How to use the principle I just taught to, the, to debug your models. When you check this function, when you, when you implement the machine learning models, the input is the data. So you check is the data is pre-processed and labeled correctly. And when you check the, uh, you can see the second box is the W equal to MP zero or something. Uh, the W is the weight you have to learn. And in the, in the second yellow box, we do the initialization of your weight. And uh, you should ask, is the initialization of the parameters is right? Actually, I can tell you it's wrong because for the linear regression or something, it's better to initialize your weight use some random number, random, but not all zero. For all zero, it just get stuck at the initial process. And uh, I mean, in the last two yellow box is something you have to follow the formulas. Uh, to compute the gradient of your machine learning or linear regression models. So you have to check, is the gradient computation formula and is the implement is correct, exactly match what you learned in from the, from the lecture. And the last yellow box is the model update. When you get some gradient and update model, you also have to check whether it's right. So uh, this is something I want to build a connection between the high level abstract principles to the exactly examples you are, you are faced in your maybe next homework. So is there any question here? Okay, cool, let's get started.
Uh, so after go through these two exactly case and uh, the examples, I still want to give you some more detailed and more helpful suggestions to help you debug more smoothly in the machine learning program. Uh, so here are some general suggestions. It's not a lot like the tech details, but more the general suggestions. The first is uh, to be patient and be very and uh, no panic, because I'm a, I'm a final year PhD and doing this machine learning for more than five years, 60 years. And during my project, during my preparing my paper examination, I spent more than maybe 30% of my whole work time debugging the machine learning models. So it always happens. For, for, like your, for the beginner like yours, you can get started in the machine learning debug. And for some kind of experienced man like me, I still get stuck here and suffer a lot. So be patient. It's always hard, that's just like your, our life. Uh, and the second suggestion, I mean, I mean it's identical at every stage. Just uh, in, uh, we can go back to the dimension roadmap like here. When, when you are machine learning debug, the, the bug is here, identify what happens, what exactly happens, what kind of the error is caused by. So that's the very important thing, because when you, you can identify, you can locate your error on, on the roadmap, you have a more clear logic to solve it. Uh, and then you can find your debug direction just just based on the uh, you identify where's the error state. Uh, so here's the general suggestions, uh, and here I just give some introduce some procedure and toys you can use to debug your machine learning um, models more smoothly. Uh, here I here right is here. I think the most important tool for your machine learning debug or general debug is the print functions. If you're something your, your models didn't give the wrong answer or get something wrong, just print it. Search the print function and, and check the middle states of your model, of your programs. Uh, some, uh, there's another very useful there's debugging toys help you more convenient to do the print. Like don't just uh, write, write your script, uh, not not only in the, in the Python script, script, but in the in the Jupyter notebook, because I think in Jupyter notebook you can print everything and to do the data visualization and print everything very conveniently. And secondly, something the variable explorer, I mean, in some uh, IDM like the VS Code, like the PY Charm and Spider or something, and you can send some breakpoints. Uh, actually, there are some more advanced the compiler and the printing function. I mean, in the general the computer computer science community. However, you have the you have to have the clear idea. All of these advanced toys or some toys you, you may have never heard. Don't be afraid of that. The key idea, I mean, the goal for these toys, the how one goes, just help you to more convenient and more smoothly to print to do the print function. So a print function is a soul for all the debugging. That's my view. And I think it really helps. Uh, and the second and the second the toys or procedure can help you uh, more smoothly debugging in the machine learning. Uh, is from is the here is the slide I mean from some Google from some Google Google company to have person some general suggestion for develop your machine learning procedure. But here I don't want to go to very detail about this uh, step one, step two, or step three. But I just want to give you a very high level and most valuable suggestion is on the in the in the red text is start from the simple. Because when I think when you start to doing your first or second machine learning project, you are the, I think our lecture will uh, provide you some data set and uh, ask you to run something. But uh, my suggestion is don't touch the real data. First, uh, you can start with some demo, do some very simple simulation. Just prepare some data by yourself. Just imagine you prepare some maybe uh, 10 training data with the correct name, uh, with the correct label, and from the simple, and from the simple data, from the simulation, from the synthetic data, if your models can run smoothly without bug, without the uh, the, the strength performance, and then you go ahead to the real data, uh, because it can help you reduce your debugging certain phase. Just just review when you get a debug, the bug came from the data, came from your implementation, came from the model, and then the first step, we just remove the data. We start from some very simple things and we can 100% confident our data is right. So you can, if it, there's a bug, go back to check your algorithm, to check your implementation. So from the start, from the simple, is the principle here. 
uh, and another, I just give you give you some tips. I mean, it's not also it's something not very, very complex, but some general tips to reduce the probability you make bugs, and you can debug efficiently. Here's some very important the the, the 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 tips. I think the first tips is for you is comment and document your code well, just like some meme in the computer science community. Comment your data, comment your code is very, very, very important. For here, for, 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 your, for your current step, it's helped you, I mean, debug or finish your homework, finish your project quickly. And when you graduate, when you start to uh, cooperate with others on some bigger project, it's very, very important. And it's actually, it's more important than your coding skill, than your knowledge of almost early. So communication is, as most communication is based on the good comments and documents. Uh, here, I just gave a more example here. Uh, I think here is something, uh, the code I write for, for the more advanced or complex machine learning models. And I use lots of their parameters, like there's some, some matrix, the parameters is stored in some way in, in some in a matrix or even in a tensor. I mean, tensor is just a more high dimension array or something. And you can see the green text as a comments. I just write down the target size for every parameters after each code line. So, uh, and when this code just gets, in, gets something wrong, just get a better, perform better performance or even get it back. What I'm doing, I just print the every parameter at least here. And not print only the value, but print the shape and check whether the variables, his shape is exactly match what I comment, comment here. So this is a very, I, I did it everywhere in my code and working. Uh, especially I think for your, I think the decision tree is okay because you don't have the complex matrix or vector computation. But when you, in your maybe your homework three, when you start to work on the uh, SVM, I mean the supporting vector machine. So a lot of their operation and computation based on the matrix, based on their tensor. So it's better to do this. Otherwise we are, the, I mean, handle the reshape or something in their Python in their machine learning is could be the first challenge for you. Uh, and I think the second tip here, I mean, for reduce the probability of your bugging is modularize your code and unit test. Uh, what I'm saying here is when you start your when you start a project on your machine learning as your decision tree as your ma machine learning models, you have to write things in the separate files of the Python files. Uh, I at the, at the very beginning uh, I I got used to write everything in a very big uh, Python file, maybe hundreds of lines of code, and when I try to debug it, I get very panic because you have to scroll down the hundreds of lines of your code and, and uh, check everything is it, harmful. And right here, I think you can see here is a very uh, major or widely used structure in your general the machine learning or the deep learning project. There are some different folders. Some folders just store the configs, some folders store the uh, data loader and some, some, model, some, some Python files just store the model. So write your everything separately in different file. And then when you get a debug, when you, get a, when you start to debug, you can check everything very smoothly and conveniently. And you can even you can do some what they call the unit that unit test. So if some you if some something gets wrong, uh, you can just check one by one. Is the function gets wrong? Is that is the, that function gets wrong? So modul modulize your code and unit test. And when you supply, uh, I mean, I mean when you supply submit is to your uh, TA to grading. We are very, we are very happy to see if you organize your code and project with these four. Uh, here is uh, another example. I mean, I mean, so I think for your next homework or this homework for decision tree, you see we have different class. The first class is the decision tree, so tree node, which is defined different property, like where's the feature, where's the children, where's the parents or something. And we we define another class. It's called the ID three. I think it's your algorithm mm -hmm. have to learn to make the decision tree. And what's the future selection process? And what how to set the max steps for the, for your tree or something? So write everything in a separate file in a separate class, and you have a very clear logic to make it run very smoothly. Uh, and here I think it's still another example on the decision tree. I think here is the function. 
for the generate decision tree. I you see I just call them. Uh, I just call the so can I cannot make the let's make another note here. So is this code the tree node class? I just called the this class I just made and to make a to make a node and uh, and, and then just add the node and the tree node one by one from some for loop and finally build my decision tree. So I, I didn't eat, uh, write everything here, but write separately. Yeah, that, that, that's our principle here. Modularize your code in the gram class, in the gram file. Uh, and the tip three, I mean, so, so, uh, is the search your arrow question on the internet. Uh, it's actually, I do very commonly, even, I think even it happens for everything here, every level about the scientist and engineering. Just like for a computer side, for, just like this image shows, the computer science students, maybe are a junior one, they search how to get a text in Java, in Google. And for a senior developer, 10 more years experience in Google, in the big tech, you still search the same stupid and the questions. So as a computer, computer science student, I think you don't have to memorize too much things. Just search, make use of the Google and uh, um, find something on the stack, uh, stack overflow. And I think right now the new trend is use the chat GPT. If you get, get anything stuck, just feed your arrow, feed your, 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 your run code in chat GPT and ask for help. Could it help you please to explain everything and debug everything? And I think there's a new mode for the chat GPT. They, they can even run your code and check your arrow automatically. So I encourage your guys to explore these this directions. It's help to improve, improve your efficiency of your work or something. And as, I, as a computer, computer science guy, I think the most uh, useful sprint is to uh, to be very open-minded to the new toys like ChatGPT and Google. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe next year when I make this slide, I have to chat, make I have to add some the memory about ChatGPT here. Uh, and here is the overview step about debugging the machine learning, machine learning models. So I just, uh, so you can see there's a blue arrow here. So it's general like to show the step about your uh, development of your machine learning project. The first is start from your very simple data and models. And when the bugs happens, you can see the, the red text. Uh, it can happen at every step. And there's the first, your, I mean, the first principle is locate your arrow. So what happens? It's from your algorithm, from a model, from a data or just from your implement, you made some typo or something, and then do the debug and fine tuning about your parameter or something. And when you gather everything smoothly, uh, some some toys like the Jupyter Notebook uh, helps a lot and it helps a very good habit of your machine learning programming, like make comments as com as as, uh, as as more as you, as you can and modularize your program, organize your project and do some unit tests and search everything on the internet and ask chat GPT. Yeah. Uh, again, and, and right now I think I finished the first part. I mean, some general tips and suggestions for, for your machine learning debugging. So any question here? Okay, great. Uh, and let's uh, jump to the second section. Uh, the second section, I mean, is the shortest one. I just want you, because you have to use the NumPy library in your following the homework and even your further machine learning uh, experience. So here, I don't want to go to the very detailed and basic for your for the NumPy, but I just post down a self checklist right here. And I will go through, I will read it very quickly. And we are, when I read these questions, you should ask yourself in your mind and uh, tell yourself whether I can solve it. If you can, I mean, you're great. Otherwise, you go back to go back to check the menu uh, document of the NumPy because there are some very basic and mostly most often use the operation in the NumPy. It's something like why is there an NP array? It's something array. It's something like the uh, basic, very basic the data structure in the NumPy and how to build all zero or one and random array given their particular size and how to get it, get your array from some data file like the Excel file or the TXT file and how to save your current array as their TXT, as their, as their uh, XI or something, and how you assign value, modify value, 
and how you index and slicing the given array and how to build a array from some other data structure in the Python, like the list or the tuple. Uh, and for the second, second part is for the loop and vectorized operation in the, in the NumPy. And how you, when, when for the basic operation, how you do it for multiple array or multi-dimension of the array uh, by iteration and how you do the operation in a group after, uh, I mean, do, do, you, do something we call the vectorize. You don't have to write a for loop for assign everything, but how you do this you know, in one comment without the, uh, the, loop, the, the for loop or something. It's called the vectorization or broadcasting mechanism. The better to check it. And the third part is something about uh, basic operation for linear algebra. So how to get the size of the array, how to reshape it, how to transpose the matrix, and how to do the matrix multiplication of your two arrays, and how you do the element-wise multiplication and multiply, multiply element-wise the add, stop, and the division or something, and how to explain a new dimension of the array and how to stack uh, separate the array to a new big uh, array and how you get the mean, max, median, and value about your array. So ask yourself about these questions. If you are not very familiar, so go check, go back and to check the manual and documents. Uh, and then we finished the, the second part about NumPy. And uh, then we have to a third part. Uh, is there more challenge? Is a little bit more challenge, but it's more useful. Uh, this part is about intro, basic introduction, introduction about the SciPy. So SciPy is another, I think, uh, library, you, you, uh, very widely used library in machine learning, and it's based on a NumPy. So NumPy just offers you some data structure like the ND array and some basic operation in the linear algebra. And when you want to use this data structure, this array to actually do some new problems, do some optimization, do some computation, SciPy is a library you will use very only. And I think in your, maybe in your homework two or three, uh, I mean, in the uh, SVN, when you ask to implement the SVN, you have to use a SciPy to use this, something like the optimization function in the SciPy to, to make something. So right here, because we, we you still have to reach that part uh, in your lecture. So I won't go to very details about this today, but I just leave it on the slides. And when you start with that homework, you can go back and, 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 and double check this. So here, just some, some basic uh, introduction like the SciPy is based on the NumPy and something like your is is focused on the scientific computing uh, and actually almost everything you need in machine learning in the computing computing step you can find in, in the SciPy uh, even for the I think the the most advanced framework like the TensorFlow like the like the PyTorch the more advanced uh, architecture designed for deep learning. So if you handle deep learning, I think that that framework will be better. But however, for some uh, no deep, deep learning machine learning product, SciPy can can solve I think more than ninety five percent problem in the machine learning. Uh, here, because you have to implement so the SVM, just like I said in your homework three or something. So here, I just give a very brief introduction about how to use the SciPy library to solve a, to solve an optimization problem. Actually, it's a minimized problem. Uh, so here, uh, you don't have to go into every detail here, but here is the uh, object function of also SVM. Uh, you don't have to get very, get very clear what exactly the parameters means. But here, I just want to show the general forms for optimization problems. So, I mean, the first box, red box, is the object functions. It's a function based on your per current parameters, like the W you want to optimize or you want to estimate. Uh, this procedure is called the learning procedure in machine learning. Well, well, in the machine learning, where we're learning, we're learning parameters. We're learning the W here. And we want to minimize the object function. Mm -hmm. And with some constraints, just like I list here in the, in the lower red box, how to, uh, I ought to minimize object function with a constraint. Uh, um, actually, actually, there are a limit to some, uh, optimization knowledge about something. However, in our course, you are don't you are not allowed to oh, sorry, no, no, you are not required to get every detail about the objection and how you do this step by step, step by step. But just call the function, just call the library, call the SciPy. Uh, here is just I give a very quick introduction what the optimized SciPy this function looks look like. 
you have some function, you have some x0, x0 is your initial value about your parameters. And you have some bounds, you have some constraints. And uh, you just follow this and uh, call this function. And this function will solve, will follow some very complex uh, optimizer step and finally give you optimal results from the optimization. Um, for here, uh, I don't want to go very detailed here because you have not reached this part in your lecture. Uh, so I mean, uh, I mean, I can skip here and give you a more concrete example. You can you can make it more easier to understand. So it's a it's a very classical or very trivial optimization function uh, problem called a box design. So you have a box. So you have to design the optimal the length, width, and the height of this box, and then you want to maximize the volume of the box. However, you also want to gather the less surface area about this box. So I just give some constraint about your height, your weight, and your length. And here, I just give you a formula about your volume and surface area. So the general idea here is I want to maximize my volume. However, I want to gather, minimize my surface area, and I want to keep the height weight L in some in, uh, in some integer, but, but not, not too big. So how do you exactly do this? Uh, I think I gave some, I have some code to show here. Uh, okay, give me one second. Uh, here's a very quick example to show how you just code such box design problems in the in Python code and how to call the SciPy function to optimize this. So here I just define first, you can see I first define, let's make it, let's zoom out. Yeah. The first function is just given your current x, x is, is a race to your current length, weight, and height, and you can return the value about the box. And then you define a function to compute the surface, give you your current, the, your, your design, and the follow the formula of the surface computation. And then you define object functions because we want to maximize the value. And actually it's equal to minimize the, the minus volume, which is add the, 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 the negative uh, term here. And here I define the constraint for the optimization. I want to make the, I think, I want to make the surface area of the box is less than the, uh, less than the 10 or something. Uh, and here, uh, you can see here, I, and I just gave some initial value about my design. We start from or or, or set as one. And I just give the initial, the x zero, I mean, just uh, pack this, Three variable in a two in a one variable at zero as a NP array, and then I define the bound of my variables. Just follow the required of your, of your questions, and finally I just one code to finish all the things. I just feed object functions in the minimize function. Minimize function is just uh, from the side part, and I feed the initial values, and I give them the some method. This method you can just follow document. Pick any one is okay. And you don't have to exactly understand what is this. It's something like the, the because there are various optimization, uh, but it's not included in this in these lectures. And you give the constraints, you give the bounds, and just call this, and it's done. And we just print this solution. You can see top the uh, the finally the optimal the design for the box for the height, weight, and length is right here. So it's, it's done. I think it's less than, than less than 20 lines of the code. Just just call this, yeah. Uh, right now, because you are not familiar with object function, uh, and uh, but when you start to, when you start to check the homework three, and uh, I suggest you go back and check this code. It helps you better understand how to use the SciPy optimize to to optimize, I mean, some parameters in the SVM or something. Yeah. And don't worry, I think all the code example I also put in on the slides, and this slide will show on the web page <clears throat> after the end of this course.
Okay, and I think this is all for today. So any questions or comments? Yeah, yes, please. Uh, yeah, the function I want to optimize, I all want to make a minimize is the volume. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if no more questions, I will call it a day. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a, uh, the first, I think it's from some very simple data. Yeah, and you saw, I mean, uh, Let's take an example I mean, for your, maybe your next homework or your current homework on the exam tree. You can first decide maybe handwriting or hand computing, the first step by, by yourself, and then make your code run and to check whether the first step, I mean, maybe the first feature is right. Okay. So check, right. Um, no, yeah, I think because. Uh, I'm not sure whether the design tree is a deterministic algorithm. Deterministic means well, every round is yeah. Yeah, exactly match. Just, um, well, some people get, and I have some people get different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why I was thinking about it. And then it was like, just give them one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's a good question. Yeah, you can sort of like how that is. But, uh, it was not a fair thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly.